I was thinking the other day, I want to make a new cake, something which I haven't tried out before, and I was thinking about Nutella. And what can I make with Nutella? Then I was thinking about, I really like crepe with Nutella and bananas, and who does not love the combination between banana and Nutella? So could I make a banana Nutella cake? But I want something elegant, like a cream cake. So I was thinking, what about if I try out to make a Nutella banana cream cake? Well, certainly gluten-free. Before I can make a cream cake, I have to figure out how to make a gluten-free banana sponge cake. It's gonna be a lot of trial and errors, and let's see what I come up with. I'm gonna use the basic vanilla sponge cake, make a few modifications, and I will see what comes out of it. I'm gonna measure first my, my flour combination I use for my vanilla sponge cake, which I know has always turned out really nice. I'm gonna double the amount though, because I will make some errors. Here's my flour combination. Since I measured some extra flour, I'm gonna fill that over into a container. And certainly what I wanna make sure of is that I mix it well. By the way, if I make a lot of the same cake, I often pre-mix my flour, so I just multiply it. And then before each use, I'm gonna shake it up or mix it up because different flours have a little bit of a different density. So I wanna make sure the flours combine really well before I use them. For a sponge cake, you have to separate the egg whites from the egg yolks. And I'm showing my chocolate sponge cake how I do it. I'm gonna add now 175 gram of sugar to the egg yolk. I'm gonna actually cut down to 150 because the banana will also be very sweet. I have also to prep and melt 45 grams of butter and then add 45 grams of oil to it. I have to heat up the egg and the sugar in a hot water bath to get it nice and fluffy. And now I have to beat the egg white stiff. You know the egg white is stiff when the egg white holds its shape. I'm gonna add now the oil and the butter to the sugar and the egg yolk as well as the egg white. What you would do for the vanilla sponge cake now is you would add one teaspoon of vanilla extract and add 150 grams of the flour combination and then bake it. But I said we're gonna make a modification to it to get a banana flavor instead. So I'm gonna fold under the egg white into the other ingredients so this is good enough. What I would like to know though is how heavy the batter is so I can split it into five parts to start my experiment. To get the weight of my batter I have to re-weigh my batter in an empty bowl and the total weight is 550. So a fifth of this would be 110. I'm gonna measure now 110 grams of the batter into each bowl. So this is what I thought would happen is that the last one is a little bit less than 110. So I'm gonna put a little bit from the other egg whites over. So here are my different five experimentation bowls. And I'm gonna add a little bit of a different combination of flour and banana. Let's measure though how much banana I got. I'm gonna shoot for 150 gram of banana or maybe a little bit more. So let's say 250. I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of water to help with the blending. Here's my blended banana. So I'm gonna add about 50 gram of parade banana to each of the different samples. Haha. Okay. I'm still short of 10 grams, but luckily I have a little bit more here. Okay, close enough. For the original recipe, I would now add 30 grams of the original flour combination to the different bowls. And I'm gonna do that for the first bowl, and then I'm gonna do some variations on how much flour I'm gonna add to it, just to see the different texture outcomes. And I should probably try down the variations of my flour combinations. For my second bowl, I'm gonna add 40 grams of flour, for my third bowl, I'm going to use 50 grams of flour. For my fourth bowl, I'm going to use 40 grams of flour again. And for my last, my fifth bowl, I'm going to use 50 grams of flour. I'm going to add different amounts of baking powder to the different bowls. So for my second and third bowl, I'm going to just add a quarter teaspoon. And for my fourth and fifth bowl, I'm going to add a quarter and one eighth, which makes three eighths of baking powder. For flavor's sake, I'm gonna add to each of them a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm gonna mix each of them to make sure I can keep the version separate. I normally have cupcake holders with different colors and that's how I can differentiate them. I use often a white one for the control group. Then I have some purple ones, a green. I'm gonna add now the different fillings into the different cupcake holders. And I have a blue, which I'm gonna use for number five. Everything is filled up and let's bake it for like 20, 25 minutes at 325 degrees Fahrenheit and let's see what comes out. This is the result after 25 minutes of baking. Let's have a look. 
I admit they came out of the oven. I didn't have lunch yet. So I did try them already. So here are the different results. And you can see this one is really nice and fluffy. It's like almost like an angel food. Number two is a little bit denser, which makes sense. I added a little bit of more flour to it and has a nice crumb. The third one has even bigger crumbs and makes sense since I added more baking powder to it. The fourth, you can see how dense it's getting. So this is definitely more in the direction of a muffin texture. And this is the last one where the crumb is much denser. I have more flour in it and more baking powder. And if I reduce the egg whites in this recipe, I'm definitely on the direction of a nice muffin. So for my Nutella cake, I'm gonna think, I'm gonna use either number two or three, most likely number two because it's a little bit softer than number three, but I'm gonna check how it feels like the next day. Check tomorrow though, which sponge cake kept better overnight or for the next two, three days, because that gives me a better indication which I can use for my cake. So I did taste test the different recipes the next day to see which one of the recipes or which one of the different a banana sponge cakes would hold most of the moisture and be still be nice and soft the next day. And number three won. So I'm gonna go ahead with the third recipe to make my banana sponge cake for my Nutella buttercream Swiss meringue cake which I'm gonna show you next week. So if you enjoyed watching my experimentation, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos.